Hello, precalculus students. I am going to go over how to use sine and cosine with in our trigonometry for things like how tall is the flagpole. Although that's actually the next video when we get to tangent. Okay, so last video I introduced the Pythagorean theorem. And I said if you take the square root of both sides, so square root of a squared plus b squared equals the square root of c squared, and you just get c by itself, this is known as the distance formula. So let's use it. We have a point, 2, 5. Uh, what's the distance from the origin? So we want to know how long this little line is. Well, if we drop a line down to 2, we can see that, yeah, we are looking at a triangle. And we can use a squared plus b squared. Why don't we use x and y, alphabetical order? 2 squared plus 5 squared is 4 plus 5 equals square root of 29. Okay, square root of 29 is a great answer if that's all the information you gave me. Um, what if this point was pretty negative? So negative 6, negative 5. Distance formula still works. So it doesn't matter whether you go across to make a triangle or go up to make a triangle. Either way, you know that you've got a distance of 6 and a distance of 5, but you can still use the negatives in the formula. Because what happens when you have a negative and you square it? You get a positive. So 6 squared is 36, and negative 5 squared is 25. Anyway, we'll get a distance of 61. So it's positive, we can get real numbers, no negatives hiding under the square root sign. And I gave you the formula using a right triangle and a circle where we had a y side and an x side, an r for radius, and a theta for the angle that came from the origin. Uh, I told you make sure your theta isn't the 90 degree right angle. And then We've got sine equals y, the far side, divided by the radius, the long side. And cosine is the closer side, divided by the long side, the radius. So y over x and y over r, excuse me, and x over r for cosine. And sine, s-i-n, is the abbreviation for s-i-n-e, <laughs> easy abbreviation. Cosine gets abbreviated to cos, cosine. Okay, get that out of the way. All right, these formulas are not that hard to use. So I'm on top of a hill. I want to go down this 30 degree hill to the bottom of a 100 foot tall building. So how far away am I? So this is that distance formula. And in this case, I don't have this line, but I do have an angle. So I picked sine because I was looking at something that was away from my angle. It wasn't connected to my angle at all. So sine of, see I'm going down, negative 30 degrees equals that 100 divided by the distance. So we can solve for distance. Just say it's 100 divided by sine of negative 30 degrees. Let me pause and pull up the calculator. I started typing the calculator and realized I didn't hit record. So 100 divided by sine, right here on your calculator, sine of negative 30, enter. So this says about 101 feet. Now, I need to point something out. You might have a different answer. Remember how angles could be measured in either degrees 
or in radians? Well, sine can be in degrees or radians. So we go to mode and see what we've got. Well, right here, mine is in radians. I don't have 30 radians. I have 30 degrees. So I hit enter to turn degrees on, and I'll quit. So 100 divided by sine of negative 30 gives me a negative 200. Let me pause and think about this. Okay, my charge in degree. I think what the problem is, is the building is measured from the top down. So, I was trying to show you a negative angle, and the building should have been measured in a negative way. Negative 100. So, you're, you're dropping from the top of the building to the bottom. You went down. There we go. Divided by sine of negative 30. Okay, so obviously, bing, bing, bing. Um, if you don't know, <laughs> um, yeah, distance can't be a negative number. Uh, distance traveled. Remember how it was the square root of a square? It has to be a positive number. So I knew that negative 200 was wrong. Now this one was negative because we went from the top to the bottom. We went down. It had a direction. Distance didn't matter. Okay, um, let's change it. So this time we're starting at the building and we're going up the hill. Now I wanted to make it a little less steep. I mean, 30 degrees coming down is is great for going down the hill but when you you're pedaling up you don't really want it to be that steep so i thought what if it was like 10 percent right here well i already know it's 90 here so it's got to be 80 here because the angles of a triangle have to add up to 180 so 90 plus 10 is 100 and i need to 80 to get up further so in this case, I, my angle and my known side are right there touching each other. So that's going to give me a cosine. So even though, you know, it's the same uh, deal, it's just where the angle is, where, what, it, what we know. So we get cosine of 80 degrees equals 100 divided by D. So D has to equal 100 divided by cosine of 80 degrees. And let's plot the calculator. Okay, so 100 divided by cosine of 80. And I should still be in degree uh, mode. So if our angle isn't as steep, we're going to have to go a much longer distance. Now, let's say it had been a 5 degree angle here. So, 5 degrees here would make it 85 right here. Eighty five. Okay, so 100 divided by cosine of 85 degrees. Okay, so <laughs> it was half as steep and twice as long, more or less. Okay, uh, you know, with a little bit of rounding, but that's that seems pretty consistent. Now, what if we put in in terms of radians? So I know a 90 degree is pi halves. So what instead, if this was... Uh, I'm coming up here and inserting an equation. Just so you can ah, get my picture out of the way. I'm inserting an equation. Equation. Thank you. So what if it was 
Okay, so pi halves, I'm making it a fraction. So, what if it was like, uh, 10 pi, da, 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 pi, divided by, let's see, 10, 10 times 2 is 20, so 21. Oh, no, back, it's got to be 21, I can't even see what I'm doing. 21 on the bottom. Come on, on the bottom, there we go. All right, so make it a little bit bigger. <laughs> so instead of 80 degrees, 85 degrees, this is now in radians, and it's a little bit less than pi halves. Yeah, a little bit less. So right here, the function would change to 10 pi. Let's see. Pi divided by 21, which means this would have to change to 10 pi <laughs> divided by 21. So, you know, same deal, same function, but when you get to your calculator, you have to make sure you change the mode. Come on, mode, mode, there we go, to radians instead of degrees. So enter, okay, I'll quit. So 100 divided by the cosine of 10, and let's see, pi's right here above my caret button. So second pi divided by 21. Okay, turns out this angle is even shallower. Um, to go up on a bicycle. So you have to go a lot further. <laughs> so you can see the, you know, up the hill so you can actually see the top of the building. Um, okay, I will get to the uh, Ferris wheel after I do one more problem. Okay, I wanted to show you this problem because what if you don't know the angle? What if you were told, okay, if you go up the hill for one mile, which was 5,280 feet, you can see the top of the building. Well, what sort of angle are you going up the hill on? Um, I put in two angles. This one's theta. This one is the symbol for delta. Um, it doesn't matter. And what's really interesting is uh, the way it works. <laughs> okay, since this angle is touching our information, it's going to be the cosine. Since this angle theta is away from the building, they're opposites, it's going to be sine. So the functions are going to look like sine of theta equals 100 divided by 5, 2, 8, 0, and cosine is the same number. So what's going on? Well, this is the information we have. What's different is this angle and this angle. And we'll use it with cosine and sine. And I just realized we are at 14 minutes. Uh, There'll be another video.